I'm completely a Midwesterner. I grew up here, my family is from here. My father's side of the family were all farmers, and my mother's side of the family were all steel workers. The electric industry was invented here. Mobility of people was invented here. Transformation of the uh, agricultural economy was invented here. And we are living with legacies that are not up to what people had once invented, and we have a need to reinvent it. I have to say the Midwest is a target-rich area. <laughs> there is a lot to do. If you look out the window of my bedroom, what you see is the largest coal plant in North America, and there is a massive plume of pollution that sits right over our town every single day. So I think that I was always aware of our community getting dumped on by this industry. Utilities decide how we generate our electricity. If a utility invests in energy efficiency and they start to sell less power, their profits go down. We had some success in Michigan when uh, Detroit Edison would propose a different business model. Their profits don't depend on increasing sales. Their profit depends on providing good, efficient service to their customers. Well, we're actually working on a case right now in my hometown, Middletown, Ohio. The biggest employer has always been AK Steel. We are looking at a case where they're trying to expand their facility and build in what's called a new coke plant. It's a plant that takes coal and turns it into this coke that they use in the steel manufacturing process. And they've decided to build this facility in what I would consider to be the worst possible place. It's literally in the middle of a residential neighborhood. It's a few hundred yards away from a school where kids play outside at recess. It's like a half a mile away from a nursing home. And it's literally in the backyards of these families that have joined together to form their own community group. We have worked very closely with them to help them try to fight this proposal. If we want to transform America's energy economy, we have to transform the Midwest energy economy. We need a combination of both smart ideas good advocacy and the muscle to get the job done. If you look at passing any sort of comprehensive change on any of the issues that NRDC cares about, you have to go through the Midwest. I work on a pesticide called atrazine with our health and environment program. Atrazine is a chemical that's used by farmers. It's applied to mostly corn crops in the Midwest right at the beginning of the growing season to suppress weeds. It runs off into water, into streams and lakes uh, and into underground wells and it ends up in a drinking water, and it's poison. It's a chemical that at very low concentrations literally turns male frogs into female frogs. It turns them into hermaphrodites. It makes them grow female sex organs. NRDC is working on all fronts to address the problem not only of atrazine, but of all of the kinds of chemicals in the class of atrazine. We're doing that in Washington, D.C., in front of the Environmental Protection Agency, at the state level, in front of state agencies in Minnesota, at the legislative level, and at the local level by putting out reports and information to consumers to let them know about the atrazine levels in the water they're drinking and things they can do to reduce atrazine. We should be looking at whether there are new technologies, new 21st century solutions that will allow us to live more sustainably. What NRDC brings is a really unique combination of the research and policy expertise and the political and legal savvy and a strong membership. You have to be staffed up and ready to fight in the heartland of America. You have to come to politicians and decision makers as residents and as people who support hundreds of thousands of members of NRDC who live right here in the Midwest. In the United States, citizens are involved with their fate. The environmental laws that are the basis of what we do today, Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act, at the heart of them is citizen participation. That's the attraction of NRDC. That's what it empowers our staff to do, and that's what it supports.